Hello, and welcome to the Ohio Chamber of Commerce's Elected Officials Interview Series. I'm Rick Carfania with the Ohio Chamber, and I'm pleased to be joined today by State Senator Michelle Reynolds. Uh, she is of the 3rd Senate District of Ohio, which has a portion of Franklin County here in Central Ohio. Senator, welcome to the program. Thank you, Rick. Happy to be here. Great. Well, I guess first question would be, you have some of Franklin County. Uh, could you be a little bit more specific and tell us what areas you cover? Absolutely. So I cover a portion of Franklin County, which is mainly the suburban eastern and uh, lower south, east, and west portions of Franklin County, mm -hmm. specifically New Albany, Westerville, Reynoldsburg, Blacklick, Gahanna, Canal Winchester, Groveport, Grove City, Lockbourne, Urbancrest, parts of Columbus, and all the way up to like the hilltop, and also 10 townships. That is impressive that you keep all of that straight. Uh, you are a freshman legislator. Uh, just got just got elected, just got sworn in, but it's not your first rodeo when it comes to elected office. Can you tell us a little bit about your background in public service? How did you get to the Ohio State House? Well, thank you, Rick. Well, actually, my background starts as being a business owner. I'm a third generation business owner. I uh, grew up here in Ohio from a rural part of Ohio called Jefferson County. Sure. And um, in 2001, I moved to Columbus, Ohio to really kind of start my life and it's been a, a huge blessing. Um, I started a nonprofit organization that provides housing to formerly incarcerated men and women and I served in that capacity for about 18 years uh, where we contract with the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction. Mm -hmm. From there I decided, you know, because I'm an addictive problem solver, that I really wanted to jump into public service because I was already serving the community. So I started from a grassroots perspective. Um, I went on to run for public office, uh, my first run here in Franklin County for county commissioner. Mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily successful in that race, but because of that race, um, I actually got appointed to the governor's office of faith-based and community initiatives and served in the DeWine administration for three years. And then the very next year I ran for um, a township trustee position, which I won. So I served my local community for three years as Madison Township trustee, and the last year as the board chair before I decided to jump in the Senate race, and mm -hmm. now here I am. Certainly well-traveled. You bring a lot of experience to your role. Um, you were given a great honor as a freshman state senator and named the vice chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, that would seem to align naturally with a number of the, the priorities that you have listed. That includes improving public safety, yes. criminal justice reform, and making sure that Ohioans have access to justice. Uh, have you seen much intersection? I know we're still kind of early in this General Assembly, but has there been much intersection between your committee role as vice chair and your policy interests? So I would say, first of all, just being named to the committees that I was appointed to really does align with my policy interests and my background. So I, I'm very pleased with the assignments that I have and I take them very seriously and I'm actually having a lot of fun. Um, as far as the Judiciary Committee, um, there was a huge omnibus bill that was passed in the last General Assembly that really did a major overhaul when it comes to criminal justice reform. And I'm sure that there are more issues that we can tackle and I'm, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Right now we're kind of knee deep into the budget. So yeah. um, we haven't got there yet but more to come. So speaking of the budget, one of the biggest priorities for the Ohio Chamber of Commerce is to find ways to grow our state's housing stock. Yes. It doesn't matter if it's single family homes or multifamily rentals. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough supply to meet the demand and we have tens of thousands of jobs coming here yeah. in the next five to seven years. Housing is another stated issue, priority issue for you. Yes. Can you give us a little bit of perspective as to how this is affecting workforce specifically in the third cent district. Absolutely. So I am happy that um, Intel is actually within the district because uh, although it's in uh, uh, Licken County sure. um, and I serve Franklin, but New Albany is, is in my district. And right. so really, obviously Intel touches the entire region, but specifically it hits home. Mm -hmm. And we have to do, you know, first of all, we have an affordability crisis right now when it comes to housing, but we have a real workforce issue. Uh, with our workforce, um, but we have demand right now for housing, workforce housing specifically, because we can create all the jobs that we want. However, if we don't have a place for people to live to be able to take those jobs, then we're not going to be successful. So right now that is a huge priority. 
And something that I'd actually like to lead on in this General Assembly, because I have a background in housing. I've been a real estate agent since 2004. I understand the market. I understand, you know, a healthy market has about 6,000 homes on the market. Right now in Central Ohio, we have about 1,500. Yeah. So we're already in, an, in a housing crisis. Um, and so I'd like to maybe start a housing caucus. Uh, we'll see. Uh, more to come on that. Well, it sounds like you're certainly applying your personal skill set, your life experience to this really, really important issue here in the state of Ohio. You're four months into your first term as yes. senator. Yes. Uh, you are the primary sponsor, at least right now, as of now, on 10 pieces of legislation. Yes. Uh, is there maybe one or two that you're the most passionate about that maybe you can tell us a little bit about? Yes. Yeah, so I'm very passionate about um, Senate Bill 49, which I call the Red Bill. It stands for Religious Expression Days. Okay. And um, it actually helps our our students in K-12 through public schools to be able to express their faith. So it's similar to a piece of legislation that came out last GA um, by Representative Click, but that was more for the higher ed side. This one is for K-12, through and it's simply to allow our students who um, have whatever type, whatever the religious background they come from, sure. it allows them to miss up to three days of school and be excused for those absences and make up their work. And I think that it's, you know, it's far time for us to do that because a lot of people, faith is important to them. Sure. And for instance, you know, if you are Muslim and you celebrate Eid, that is not necessarily a recognized holiday. And so students who miss those days have not been able to traditionally make up their work and so they're penalized. Mm -hmm. And that's not the message that we want to send. Mm -hmm. And so this is um, a bill that's gotten a lot of support from um, Christians, Jewish community, uh, Muslim community, all type of diversities of faith. So I'm really excited about that Once one. Once again, drawing on your experience yes. uh, in the Governor's Office of Faith-Based yes. Initiatives. Yes, yes. Great, great. So from a geographic standpoint, there are lots of pros and cons to being a mm -hmm. Central Ohio legislator. Mm -hmm. uh, for starters, you get to sleep in your own bed every night. That's right. Um, as opposed to your colleagues, some of whom maybe have to travel great distances and they have to get a hotel room in their way for, for extended periods. Um, the upside is that you're able, you're more accessible uh, in your district, in your state house office, and even to your own family. Yes. The downside is you're accessible in the district, in your state house <laughs> office, and also to your family. Uh, you can't be everywhere at once. That's right. Uh, but do you have any secrets you can share as to how you're managing your schedule? How can you be effective yes. in this job? Well, thank you so much for asking. A lot of times people, you know, will talk about work-life balance. Yeah. And for me, there's no such thing as balance, but there is work-life rhythm. Yeah. And so with a work-life rhythm, sometimes that means it takes more of your time. So there's like a pitch. Sure. And then there's sometimes when you have the downtime, you need to really get rest and, and do those things that you enjoy. And so that's what I've, I've embraced as a work-life rhythm. Also a secret is I don't do anything alone. I have an amazing team. Those that know me know that Michelle Reynolds comes with a team. Um, I believe in um, trusting my people um, that walk alongside me to do the work. I value their input. Um, I'm more of an egalitarian type of leader. And so I like to develop people along the way and we walk this together. And that's been effective for me. That's great. That's great. I mean, you're only as good as your staff. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. So the Ohio House of Representatives, the other chamber, is putting their finishing touches this week on the state's two-year operating budget. It will then come across the street to you and your yes. colleagues in the Ohio Senate. Yes. Uh, and you'll have a chance to review and amend it multiple times. Governor DeWine certainly has his priorities in this budget. The Ohio House has their priorities in this budget. The Senate will have its own. What are Senator Michelle Reynolds' <laughs> priorities at the state well, budget? Well, to be honest with you, housing is a very big priority for me mm -hmm. um, and, I, and for obviously the region. And so we need to make sure that we are doing the right things and incentivizing multifamily housing, workforce housing, um, housing for people who actually have barriers. So I would like to see in, in my priorities, housing being a, a number one thing. Also, um, we need to do the right things as it, com as it relates to workforce. Okay. Um, and so I'd like to make sure that um, whatever we need to do to make sure that we get people in jobs, upskilling their, their uh, like tech cred sure. and their talent, we need to be able to get people in jobs and whatever that means for them, we need to be able to do that. Workforce is the number one challenge across the statewide business community. Absolutely. Whether it's job training, job credentialing, as you just mentioned, whether it's housing, yes. childcare, transportation, yes. all of those 
buckets yes. all, all lead to a qualified, reliable, stable um, crop of employees for uh, employers. Absolutely. We always like to end this program on a more personal, lighthearted note. You have a fascinating biography mm -hmm. on the Senate's website. So you, you mentioned that you sell real estate. Yes. Uh, you are a third generation business owner, as you yes. mentioned. You're yes. CEO of the nonprofit. Uh, you and your husband pastor a church. Yes. And oh, by the way, you have six children. Yes. <laughs> when do you relax? And when you do relax, what do you like to do for fun? Well, I'm happy to say that my youngest child is graduating from high school this year, so we will be empty nesting. Okay. So everybody's pretty much grown, um, but I do have a new grandbaby, and it's a little girl, and I'm oh. a boy's mom, so she is what I do for fun on the weekends. I do try to regard my weekends for family. I like to travel. I like to read. Mm -hmm. um, and I really love self-care. So you yeah. may find me at a spa somewhere doing something that helps me to relax or a facial. But that's what I do for fun. That's really critical is finding those opportunities to recharge. That's correct. Yes. Well, Senator Michelle Reynolds, thank you so much for thank joining you, us Rick. today. This yes. was wonderful. Great it's answers. Wonderful. Great to hear thank you. that you're a business owner. A lot of that resonates with our membership, of course. So for the elected officials interview series for the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, once again, I'm Rick Harfania. We're glad that you were able to join us for a little bit today. Thank you.